In this lesson, we will discuss aircraft batteries. As always, it is not all-inclusive of everything you need to know on this topic. Additional information can be found in FAA Publications, the Aviation Maintenance Technical Handbook for General Students, and Acceptable Methods, Techniques, and Practices of Aircraft Inspection and Repair. Batteries convert chemical energy into electrical energy. A charged battery will have an excess of electrons at its negative terminal and an electron deficit or positively charged ions at its positive terminal. There are two main types of aircraft batteries, lead acid and nickel cadmium. Both types can be repeatedly recharged via the aircraft alternator. Aircraft get their electrical power from two sources, batteries and alternators. The batteries are used primarily for starting the engine. Once the engine has started, the aircraft's electrical needs are met by the alternator, which also charges the battery. Lead acid batteries are made up of a number of cells connected in series. Each cell contains positive plates of lead peroxide and negative plates of spongy lead and electrolyte, sulfuric acid and water. Lead acid battery cells are composed of 1. A series of plates to which the active materials, spongy lead or lead peroxide, are attached. Each positive plate is sandwiched between two negative plates. 2. The container housing the cell. 3. The supporting ribs, which help facilitate the flow of electrolyte and prevent the plates from contacting any sediment that may have settled on the cell bottom. Number 4. A vent cap to allow access so the electrolyte can be tested and water can be added. It also allows gases to escape. Number five, a terminal post. Number six, a cell cover. And number seven, porous separators, which keep the positive and negative plates from touching each other. You will want to commit the parts of a battery to memory. In the near future, you will be given a battery cell picture similar to this one and asked to identify the seven parts of a battery. The individual cells of a lead acid battery are connected in series by means of cell straps. The vent plugs have a lead weight inside each one that will seal the vent in the event that plane is inverted to prevent the highly corrosive electrolyte from leaking into the aircraft. Each lead acid battery cell has a voltage of approximately 2.1 volts. To create a 12 volt battery, six lead acid cells are connected in series. Batteries are also rated in amp hours. Amps furnished by the battery multiplied by the amount of time current can be drawn. Theoretically, a 100 amp battery will furnish 100 amps for one hour, or 50 amps for two hours, or 20 amps for five hours, etc. Aircraft batteries are rated with a discharge time of five hours. Connecting batteries in parallel increases the amp hour capacity. However, connecting batteries in series increases total voltage, but not amp hour capacity. When I connect two batteries in series, positive to negative, positive to negative, I sum their voltages together, but do not change the amp hour capacity. When I connect two batteries in parallel, positive to positive and negative to negative, my voltage stays the same, but I sum their amp hour capacities. The capacity of a battery is affected by four things. The amount of active material, 
the effective plate area, the quantity of electrolyte, and the temperature. An increase in any of the first three of these factors will result in an increase in the capacity of the battery. Similarly, colder temperatures will decrease the capacity of the battery. This is one of the reasons why our automobiles are harder to start during the winter time. Lead acid battery electrolyte has a higher specific gravity than distilled water and the amount of it absorbed onto the plates changes as the charge of the battery changes. Higher ratios of electrolyte in the mixture will result in a higher specific gravity for the mixture. A higher specific gravity reading, as indicated on the hydrometer, will indicate a higher state of charge. The specific gravity of the electrolyte mixture is also dependent upon the temperature. Whenever the ambient temperature is other than 80 degrees Fahrenheit, a correction factor will have to be added to the hydrometer reading. Here is an example of a correction factor chart for the specific gravity of batteries at temperatures other than 80 degrees Fahrenheit. A fully charged 12 volt lead acid battery should read about 12.8 to 12.9 volts on a DC voltmeter. Readings in the 10.5 volt range indicate a shorted cell. A battery is charged by passing direct current through the battery in the opposite direction of the discharge current. Because of the internal resistance of the battery, the voltage of the charging source must be greater than the open circuit voltage of the battery. Battery electrolyte is highly corrosive and can damage eyes, skin, clothing, etc. For this reason, if it becomes necessary to mix water and battery electrolyte, it is important to pour the acid into the water and not the other way around to reduce the likelihood of acid splashing onto your person or clothing. Batteries are charged by either the constant current or constant voltage methods. Under the constant voltage method, a constant regulated voltage forces a current through the battery. The current at the start of the charging process is high, but then tapers off to about 1 amp once the battery is fully charged. This method requires less time and supervision than the constant current method. The constant current method requires a longer charging time and if care is not exercised, may result in overcharging. Aircraft batteries are charged via the aircraft generator or alternator whose voltage is held constant by use of a voltage regulator. If the battery begins gassing freely during a constant current charge, decrease the current and continue charging until the charge is complete. A shorted battery can cause severe burns and damage. We can see that the battery to the right has six cell caps, and therefore six cells. Since we know that each cell in a lead acid battery is producing just over 2.1 volts per cell, we know this is a 12 volt battery. We get from 2.1 volts to 12 volts by connecting the cells, the cells in series which sums their individual voltages. The same is true with batteries. If we connect them in series, we add their voltages. If we connect them in parallel, we add their amperage. Another common type of battery used in aviation is the NiCad or nickel cadmium battery. Though relatively expensive compared to the lead acid battery, it possesses several distinct advantages.
NICAD battery cells are constructed in much the same way as our lead acid battery cells. Each cell is comprised of positive and negative plates, separators, electrolyte, and cell vents as in the lead acid battery. Each cell of a NICAD battery produces between 1.55 and 1.8 volts. Pictured here is a typical NICAD battery. Unlike lead acid batteries, NICAD battery cells are built individually and can be replaced when one goes bad rather than having to replace the entire battery. On the positive plates of a NICAD battery, nickel hydroxide has been deposited. Cadmium hydroxide is deposited on the negative plates. The electrolyte is a 30% solution of potassium hydroxide in distilled water. The specific gravity of the electrolyte remains between 1.24 and 1.3 at room temperature regardless of the state of charge. And for this reason, its state of charge cannot be determined with a hydrometer. During the discharge of NICAD batteries, some of the electrolyte is absorbed by the plates. This electrolyte is then later released during the recharge process. Knowing this, when would be the appropriate time to add electrolyte to a NICAD battery? Lead acid and nickel cadmium batteries should be stored and serviced in separate areas utilizing separate equipment to prevent contaminating the NICAD batteries. The potassium hydroxide used in NICAD batteries is very corrosive, therefore rubber gloves, aprons, and eye protection must be worn when servicing them. Areas of the body exposed to the electrolyte should be thoroughly rinsed with water, vinegar, lemon juice, or a boric acid solution. When mixing potassium hydroxide in water to make electrolyte, add the potassium hydroxide slowly to the water and not vice versa. Use a fiber brush to clean NICAD batteries, as a wire brush may cause severe arcing. Potassium carbonate crystals, which may form on the battery, may be removed with a brush and damp cloth as they are non-toxic and non-corrosive. If NICAD batteries are charged or discharged too rapidly, the high temperatures created within the battery may begin to break down the separator material between the plates. This allows more current to flow between the plates, creating more heat and further breaking down the separators. This condition is known as thermal runaway and may destroy the battery, cause a fire, or cause extensive damage to the aircraft. Pictured here you see examples of how thermal runaway has damaged a couple of NICAD battery cells. 